ensure you've pulled over into a safe level location, apply the handbrake, put your hazard lights on and ensure the engine is off. For safety reasons, we should wear a high visibility jacket. We should also use a warning triangle to warn other road users of the obstruction. The highway code stipulates that the warning sign should be placed at least 45 metres from the vehicle. The first item we will need is the manufacturer's wheel brace. So next I will remove the wheel trim from the vehicle. and loosen the wheel bolts. Not all vehicles will have wheel trim, such as alloy wheels. Please check your vehicle specification before starting. And I'm just gonna loosen the wheel bolts, not remove them completely. Check the vehicle's manufacturer's handbook to check where the safe jacking points are. Next, using the vehicle's jack, I'm going to jack the car up on the specific jacking points. First, I'm going to wind the jack open a few turns and then position under the vehicle like so. And what I will do next is ensure that the jack rests on the specific jacking point of the vehicle. Then we're going to wind the handle slowly, ensuring everything is square until the foot of the jack touches the floor. We raise the vehicle until the wheel is clearly not touching the floor. With the vehicle's wheel in the air, it's now safe to remove the wheel nuts. With the wheel nuts removed, we can now remove the wheel completely. As an added safety precaution, we'll put the wheel under the vehicle in case the jack fails. When placing the wheel under the vehicle, be certain not to disturb the jack. Next, what we want to do is take the spare wheel of the car. We're going to offer it up to the wheel hub lift the wheel very slightly so that it locates on the centre of the hub, align all of the holes and then locate a wheel bolt into the wheel. With all of the wheel bolts in position, we can now run down the bolts fully by hand. Constantly ensuring that the wheel is in the correct position. Like so. 
With the wheel bolts tightened by hand, I can now remove the damaged wheel from under the vehicle. And now we can wind the jack to lower the vehicle back onto the ground. We're lowering the vehicle until the jack becomes free from the car. And with the jack free from the vehicle, we can remove it like so. Consult the vehicle manufacturer's handbook to identify the torque value you need to tighten the wheel bolts to. To tighten the wheel bolts to 120 newton meters, we're going to need a torque wrench. In this case, we're using a Norbar New Professional 200 newton meter torque wrench. Ensure your torque wrench has a valid calibration certificate and adjust the torque wrench to the correct torque value. So now I'm going to bolt the wheel bolts down to the correct torque value. But before you tighten the wheel bolts, you must ensure you know the bolting pattern for your wheel. We apply the torque wrench. We push down on the centre of the handle, smoothly and slowly, until we hear and feel a definitive click. The torque signal may vary depending on the type of torque wrench you use. On to the next bolt. Follow the same procedure. Next, we're going to replace the wheel trim back onto the vehicle. We do this by locating the tangs on the trim up to the holes on the wheel. Give them a little tap. It's important to remember at this point that you've returned all of the items you've used to replace the wheel, including the warning triangle we put out earlier. If you're storing the torque wrench for a long period of time, it's best practice to wind it back to its minimum setting. Also, check the instructions on the wheel you just fitted. Most modern wheel spares aren't designed for long distances and have speed restrictions.